Okay, so our goal is to get to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. Now that we learned how to find a least common denominator, now we got to understand a process. If you take two fractions and you change their denominators, then you also have to change their numerators. You have to learn how to rewrite a fraction as its equivalent fraction. So the word equivalent means equal. It means the terms may not look the same, but they have the same meaning, the same value. You work with equivalency every day you deal with money. I could lay out four quarters and I could lay out a dollar bill. They may not look the same, but they have the same value. And that's an important concept we all learn. Think about a little child. If you had a toddler and you laid out four quarters and then you laid out a dollar bill, that toddler goes and takes the four quarters because they see four separate pieces and they think that's more there. But if you did that to, say, a first or second grader, they would by then realize those coins and that dollar bill are the same amount. And it wouldn't matter which pile they took. So equivalency is a concept we use every day in life. All right. Now, here, what we got to learn is how do you take your fraction with your old denominator and make your fraction with your new denominator? Well, if you go back, remember when we were adding one-half and one-third? The one-half became three-sixths, and we saw the visual of cutting the pizza pie in the six slices. But how do we algebraically change the one-half to three-sixths? Well, to make equivalent fractions, you multiply. And it makes sense. You're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same amount to keep balance. So if you're going to make the denominator 6, 2 becomes a 6 by multiplying by 3. So that's why the numerator became a 3, because 1 times 3 was 3. And that's why we know 1 half and 3 sixths are equivalent. Think about it. When you multiply a fraction by 3 over 3, you're just really multiplying by the value of 1 and from, again, arithmetic, multiplying any number times 1 keeps it the same. So look at my algebraic fraction on the slide. I have 5a divided by 8y squared. And I want to make that a fraction that has a new denominator of 32ay cubed. So what's missing right now is the numerator. I'm telling you what my denominator is going to be, but now i got to figure out what my numerator is. So guys, to make equivalent fractions, we do multiplication. So let's look. The 8 became a 32 by multiplying by 4. So in the numerator, we'll take 5 and multiply it by 4, and we'll get now a 20. Back to the denominator. The y squared became a y cubed by multiplying by y. So I'm going to have to go up to the numerator and multiply by y. So we have a 20 now. We're going to multiply that by y. Now we have 20y. Go back to the denominator. The original denominator was 8y squared. The new denominator is 32ay cubed. So now we have a new variable in our denominator, a. So we also multiplied by the letter a. So we have to do the same to the top and the bottom. So we're going to have to multiply the numerator by another a. So there's an a up there, so we multiply by another a. Our numerator is going to have an a squared. So in retrospect, to make 8y squared become the denominator 32ay cubed, we multiplied by a 4, the letter a, and a y. We had to multiply by 4ay. If we do it to the denominator, we got to do it to the numerator. So if you take 5a and multiply it by 4ay, you will get your new numerator 20a squared y. And that keeps balance. So it's very important when we change the denominator, we're going to have to also change the numerator by the multiplication. All right, let's hit the whiteboard.